given question find slope equation and deflection equation of simply supported beam carrying a point load at mid span by using double integration method solve one problem in this video we are going to find out slope equation and deflection equation for the simply supported beam carrying load w at its mid span if we observe the diagram supports are given at ends a and b so we have to show the reaction at these two points that is known as r a in vertically upward direction and the reaction at point b is known as r b now the total length is mentioned l and the weight w is at its uh, mid span so the its a distance from end a is known as l by 2 and other half distance is l by 2 now how to find out these reactions r a and r b so we know that for when the load w is at its a mid span then it is equally distributed at both the supports so we can say that r a is equal to r b is equal to w by 2 so we will write the value of r a and r b is equal to w by 2 now we will consider any section xx so i will consider this section xx at a distance x that is at a distance small x from this r a that is reaction r a so i will mention here this small distance x now we have to find out the bending moment at this section xx so how to find out so we know that this load multiplied by the distance x now sign convention is the important part so if i move the compass about at this section xx in the direction of ra then here is the clockwise direction so for this clockwise direction we will use positive sign and for anti clockwise direction we will use negative sign so bending moment is equal to this force multiplied by the distance x so we can say that bending moment mx is equal to ra into x but what is the value of ra it is w by 2 so it is equal to w by 2 into x now we know that bending moment at any section so we have formula at any section how to calculate bending moment it is ei d square y by dx square now if i give here equation number 1 and this is the equation number 2 then this is the both equations are for bending moment at any section so we can equate these two equations so i will write here ei d square y by dx square is equal to w by 2 into x now we are going to find out slope equation and deflection equation by double integration method so it is important to know how to calculate integration now if we observe here on this right hand side there is x so we can say that it's it is equal to x raised to 1 so how to calculate integration of x raised to n so it is equal to x raised to n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 so it is important so we will use this formula now we will write we will take the integration so integrating on both sides integration so i will just write by integration so when we take the integration then on left hand side we will get ei dy by dx is equal to w by 2 is constant and instead of x that is x raised to 1 i will write x raised to 2 divided by 2 x square by 2 when we simplify equation we will get ei dy by dx is equal to wx square by 4 plus c1 this is the equation number 4 c1 is the constant of integration now we will find out value of c1 when we put the boundary condition now if we observe equation number 4 this dy by dx is known as slope so at length l by 2 that is when load is applied w on the beam ab then it is getting deflected so it is getting deflected in this way and here is 
at the length l by 2 there is maximum deflection now what is the slope so when we draw here one tangent then it is the horizontal line so there is no any slope so we can say that at length l by 2 slope is equal to 0 so at this x is equal to l by 2 slope dy by dx is equal to 0 now these are known as boundary conditions that is bc now when we put these boundary conditions in equation number 4 then we will get the value of c1 so here 0 is equal to w by 4 into l by 2 square plus c1 so c1 is equal to minus w l square by 16 so when we put the value of c1 in the equation number 4 then we will get the slope equation that is known as ei dy by dx is equal to wx square by 4 minus wl square by 16. So this is the equation number 5 and this is known as slope equation. So slope at any point on the beam we can find with the help of this equation. So I will make the bracket. So this equation is important. Now slope at A will be maximum at x is equal to 0. So if we observe here the slope at A that means for this curve if I draw one tangent then this tangent is known as slope at A. And how to find out the slope at A? That at point A the value of x is equal to 0. So when we put x is equal to 0 in equation number 5 then we will get ei. Now this dy by dx is known as slope. So dy by dx at A is equal to x is equal to 0. So it will become minus wl square by 16. So Instead of dy by dx, we will write here as a theta a. So, the slope is known as theta a because we will measure the slope with the help of angle. So, the slope at theta a is equal to slope at theta b. So, theta a is equal to theta b is equal to minus wl square by 16 ei. We will find out deflection equation. Now, if we observe this beam ab, then it is deflected in this way. So, if I consider at this mid span, this is the point C. So, this is the original position of C and here is the final position of the C that is C dash. So, this C to C dash distance is known as Y and it is known as deflection. Now, if we observe at point A and at point B. So, here this Y is equal to 0 and this deflection is getting increased up to this length l by 2 and again it is getting decreased. Now we will find out this value of y. So how to find out? So from this equation number 5 again we will take the second integration because this is the double integration method. So when we take the integration on both sides then ei y is equal to we will get w by 4 now x square. So x square how to integrate this? We will use this formula. So x cube by 3 minus wl square by 16 x plus c2. So where this c2 is known as constant of integration. Now how to find out this value of c2 by using boundary conditions. So how to take this boundary conditions that is known as bc. Now we know that at point A, value of x is equal to 0 and y is also equal to 0. So we will use this boundary condition. So we will put x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 in this equation. So if I take this, I will take this equation number 6. So when we put this value in equation number 6, then here is 0, here is 0, this term is also 0. So c2 is equal to 0. So when we put C2 is equal to 0 then EIY is equal to WX cube by 12 minus WL square X by 16. So this is the equation number 7 and this is known as deflection equation. So we can find out deflection at any point by using this equation. So we have to write this is the deflection equation and I will make the practice. Now how 
to find out maximum deflection so if we observe this diagram then at point c there is maximum deflection that is y max and at this point c the distance x is equal to l by 2 so in this formula we will put x is equal to l by 2 then we will get y is equal to y max so we have to rewrite this equation that is ei y max is equal to that is y maximum is equal to w by 12 l by 2 cube minus w l square by 16 l by 2. So y maximum is equal to so we have to simplify this. So if we observe here the denominator is 96 and here is 32 and here is w l cube and w l cube. So we will simplify this then we will get minus w l cube by 48 e i. So this is the formula for maximum deflection and here this negative sign. So why negative sign? Because the deflection is in the downward direction. Find central deflection and slope at the ends of beam where i is equal to 15.6 into 10 raised to minus 6 meter raised to 4 e is equal to 200 giga newton per meter square let us understand given data for simply supported beam weight w is given 30 kilo newton so we will mention here this weight is equal to 30 kilo newton and the length of this beam is given l is equal to 3 meter then the moment of inertia about the section xx so we will consider any section xx at a distance small x from this end a and this moment of inertia along the section xx is given 15.614 into 10 raised to minus 6 meter raised to 4 and the value of Young's modulus E is equal to 200 giga newton per meter square. So standard unit is newton per meter square so 200 into 10 raised to 9 newton per meter square. Now first question to find out maximum deflection. So we know that maximum deflection is at the center. So this is known as Y max. And we have calculated its a formula. So Y max is equal to minus W L cube by 14, 48 E I. So minus W. So W is kilo Newton. Standard unit is Newton. So it is 30 into 10 raised to 3 Newton multiplied by L cube that is 3 cube divided by 48 value of E we will put 200 into 10 raised to 9 and value of I we will put this value. So we will get the value 5.4 millimeter. So we will get the answer in meters but we will convert it into millimeter. Now because of its a negative sign the, this direction is downward. So we can say that in the downward direction this deflection is there because of this minus sign. So if we mention only magnitude then we have to uh, show or we have to indicate its a direction that is in the bracket downward direction. Now we have to find out slope at the ends. So slope at the end A as well as slope at the end B. So we have formula minus W L square by 16 E I. So we will put the value of W then L then 16 and E and I. So here is the negative sign. So when we calculate this we will get the answer in radians. So minus 0 0.0054 radians. Now we will convert this value into degree by multiplying with 180 by pi. So when we multiply with 180 by pi, we will get 0 0.309 degree. Now here is the negative sign. Now I will show this angle theta A. Because the slope at the end A, we have to indicate with angle theta A. So I will draw here tangent to this curve. And this is known as theta A. Now if we observe direction is here from this point towards this point. So this is known as theta A. And for this theta A, value is negative. That is minus 0 0.309. But we know that the magnitude of theta A and theta B is same. Now if we observe the direction of the slope at B, it is in the opposite direction. That is theta B. So if we observe here, 
the direction is clockwise for this angle and for this theta b direction is anti clockwise now suppose the answer of theta a having negative sign then answer of theta b is in the opposite direction so magnitude will remain same that is plus 0.309 degree so this is the answer